everybody. So we are the Hallmark Use Podcast, and we are so excited here to talk about the latest episode of The Good Witch. This is The Good Witch Podcast, and I am Rachel, and Amber is here. Hi, everybody. Yeah, and we are recording. I can, <laughs> I can confirm. I see it. So we don't have the same problem we had last week, uh, but George is with us uh, here again. Hi. <laughs> Yes, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. So this episode is called Written Like a Merriwick, and we will see why it is called that coming up. Uh, but it starts out, we have the bistro getting bad reviews online. And, uh, and Stephanie, so that's sort of a thread throughout this episode with Stephanie. Uh, <laughs> what did you think about this, uh, uh, Georgia? And have you ever written a angry online uh review well what i thought about it was that i guess it, i mean it was funny it was useful you know it, it served a purpose and everything um yeah i honestly don't have a lot of thoughts <laughs> on it this whole episode just kind of felt like i didn't quite know how it was all connected it wasn't one of my favorites mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um but yeah you know it was just kind of like here's this thing here's that thing um but I always like it when Stephanie is kind of like worked up about something and she has something to do. Um, uh, but I thought it was weird that she probably hadn't had like a negative review ever. And then all of a sudden there's some one star review and I'm like, okay, like nobody yeah. would do that to Stephanie. And most people are from the area. So I thought it was suspicious, but I do not leave reviews for anything good or bad. Yeah. I probably should, but I just don't because I find them really, really helpful when I'm looking but I never actually write them. So I've never written a bad one, but I don't think I've ever written a positive one either. Okay. Yeah, so. Gourmet 428, Gourmet Eater, sorry. Gourmet there Eater 428 was uh, causing all kinds of controversy. What about you, Amber? What do you think about this? Um, I thought it was really fun. I really enjoyed Stephanie acting like she was Martha because this was just such a Martha <laughs> thing to do, just run around and be like a witch hunt for whoever wrote the bad review uh -huh. and get like all up in her head about it. Right? I mean, that's t such a Martha. Yeah. The witch hunt. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Yeah, it, it was really funny. I actually really enjoyed this episode. I thought it was uh, very charming. I don't know. I just thought that all of the actors were just like slaying it uh, in their various roles. Like the plot wasn't that great. But I don't know. I just really thought they were all doing a good job. And and uh, this was very funny. Of course, we we find out that uh, that there are there's people getting bad reviews all over town but there's also a really good review from uh, a customer that uh likes is very complimentary of stephanie uh in her appearance friendliness oh, macchiato yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, the leader of the bistro is basically the most beautiful woman ever and she's single and she should date me and i like her macchiato yeah and then That's liam comes in and he's like word for word my review so you know it's me right review says that uh that they that it's always it always hits the sweet spot in the middle of the day and so then Liam, of course, she's like wondering who this might be. And Abigail's like, wow, he, like this person has a crush on you. Cause like yeah. Stephanie's kind of oblivious to like men, I feel like. Like she doesn't take hints very <laughs> easily yeah. to like men who are interested in her, I think. She takes the wrong hints. She yeah. thinks someone likes her and he doesn't. And then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, and so Liam comes in and he's like super flirty super cute and he runs the brewery and as he's uh checking out or whatever he says yeah this always hits the sweet spot in the middle of the day <laughs> <laughs> and then anvil fell from the sky with that subtle hint yeah. geez louise aunt liam get some game really, <laughs> really liam you're like, he's a grown man you have to quote his review like come on <laughs> but i don't think he was doing that consciously i just think he was just no he was you there was zero subtlety in that rachel <laughs> Zero. I so thought he just was like, "Hey, I thought it was," and it wasn't. It wasn't just that line. He was like, "I'll have my usual caramel macchiato," 
it is always the thing that hits me in the center of my spot in the middle of the day. The the exact words. It was like four sentences of the five sentence review. And he said them all word for word, which begs the question, like, did he practice memorizing his lines? Because I think he did. And it's ridiculous. So do you it is. It's ridiculous. I don't care. Like, I know it's supposed to be like, oh, okay, oh. but also like, you're a grown man. How about you just ask Stephanie out on a date instead of being some weird, oh. like, poem leaving weirdo. <laughs> I thought it was cute. I, of I, course I, you did. I'm just saying. <laughs> it was too much. Aww. Like in the like in a movie, it's fine. But if some guy did that to me in real life, I'd be like, "What is wrong with you? Be a grown up." Which is probably why I will never get a boyfriend because they're all afraid of me. It's like they say in How I Met Your Mother's the Dahmer versus Doppler scenario. Like if somebody you like does that, does something like that, then it's super cute and thing like and say anything but if it's somebody you don't like then it's like super creepy like like Dahmer and uh so yeah that would just depend <laughs> if I liked the person or not <laughs> it was just I just was like no grow up yeah. guy oh I no, thought it was really no he was taking dating advice from like his 17 year old son because that's that's something that like a high school boy would do and think that's so something a high school boy would do like i don't know who like, honestly i don't know who would do that write the review be like she's gonna see this she's gonna read it and then come in and literally quote the review like you wouldn't you would just say something about it You'd be like oh i love the iced coffee it's so you know whatever say something nice about it she can put two and two together yeah like, or he could just be like hi want to go on a it's date true. yeah nailed it Nailed you it. Are, you guys are grumposauruses. I thought Ew. it was so you, cute. You're I a sapposaurus. <laughs> <laughs> do you think that they like have any chemistry? Do you think they'll be like, do you think we're going to see them become a couple or is it just for this one episode? I'm sure they'll become a couple. It's fine. I will it's never get over Ben. I will yeah. never, I'll <laughs> never lay down my torch for Ben. Fair when enough. Yeah. Well, so they, the, the, she figures out or whatever that the, the uh, gourmet eater 458 that she always says about a blueberry muffin, a latte, and scrambled eggs, which is a pretty big breakfast, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> also, the, my favorite thing is like, how does Stephanie not know who it is from their order? We only see like 12 people in the, the town is small to begin with. There's only like eight people who come in are regulars, and it's not like this is like oh a standard order for everybody. Yeah, like, these are very specific things. She's just the worst detective ever. This is why she's not on movies and mysteries. <laughs> That's well, why. it ends up being Martha who is the gourmet eater four five eight, and it was pretty funny when she got caught. I think, and she's basically like her rationale is that she's she's trying to make all of the businesses in Middleton better uh, by leaving these <laughs> reviews. <laughs> Whatever, and she's totally right. Boom, in your yeah. face. <laughs> I do leave angry reviews, Amber. No, I don't I don't leave any reviews because <laughs> they don't deserve my opinions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I one time I don't like I don't even return clothes if they fit me terribly and are the worst. I'm like my fault for buying it. <laughs> yeah. That's not practical, Amber. What? <laughs> it's not really practical. Like you could just return them and get your money back, you know? Yeah, yeah. I understand that's the way the world works. Mm-hmm. But I'm just like <laughs> jokes on me. <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, i i have done a couple of bad reviews there's this one chinese restaurant that's near me that it's just it was the worst meal i've ever had in my life and i i, I did put a review on there because it was like they were literally micro- microwaving everything it was just terrible and uh so <laughs> but for the most part i leave really nice reviews and if people want to leave nice reviews about our podcast, we totally encourage that. No mean reviews. <laughs> nice reviews. Please. I actually would really love some mean reviews. <laughs> Gosh, but no. Rachel doesn't. So, no. ma- you know, make up your own mind about it. <laughs> I think well, you can leave mean, leave mean reviews about Amber. Yeah. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> oh. 
she will love it but like the editing and me keep me out of it <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, anyway, okay. So uh, we have, um, I, it was pretty funny though when Martha, the whole thing with Martha was was funny. And I, I liked her whole justification. Catherine Disher was just really funny, I thought, in that scene. Yeah, and it was amazing when Abigail was like, yeah, Flower Monster 72 said that I was rude. And then she finds out it's Martha and she's like, you mean I've been being nice to customers all this time for you? And we're like, see, Martha's a good witch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leaving the responses to make everyone else be better people. Yeah. I wonder if she left a, a mean comment about Grey House. <laughs> she probably wouldn't have the guts for that. <laughs> oh, she, yeah, right. Yeah, Martha's <laughs> lacking in guts, Rachel. And I'll, how, much, how much courage does it take to leave a nasty review online? <laughs> Zero courages. Courageous? I don't know, because Cassie's gonna find out. And, uh, anyway, whatever. Would Cassie great. wouldn't. It's. It'd be fine. <laughs> it'd be fine. Yeah. So, all right. I have to say, I thought that Catherine Bell was super charming in this episode, and I would just love. So, there's this guy with these headaches at her store. She's offering all these different things, and I just loved this one little scene where she was like. Um, for a second referral, we'll talk to Sam. And then Sam comes walking up. And then like a few, uh, um, a few, a few seconds, like, she's like, I've got to help the mayor. And then and she, there's like, where's the mayor? And then, then Martha comes in. I don't know. I just thought she was super charming to me in these scenes. And it was so charming between Sam and Cassie in, in all of their various conversations I thought in this episode. I know I love all of them. I just the episode itself just like it, it's one that I don't think I'll remember past like yeah. this week. It just yeah. was not very memorable. It was not it didn't seem necessary and it also didn't seem it wasn't that fun to me. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of like, mm, okay, like I'll watch it, keep up with things, but there just wasn't a whole lot that happened and then I wasn't really laughing at much. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of like it didn't satisfy either of the needs that I have for my Hallmark shows. But that's just... Yeah. And I, like, not to be the grumpy pants, but the solution to the guy's problem is like, oh, just stressed about my yeah. job. Like, that's a lame medical Come solution. On. I understand yeah. people get stress headaches. I get it. But also, like, come on. It all felt Make like, it be a more magical thing. Like, that's a thing. It felt like, okay, I, I'm used to, like, you know, suspending the whole, what, disbelief. Mm -hmm. I can't think of the phrase. But, you know, yeah. just, like, kind of going along with it every week because it's fun. But there were too many instances. Like, every storyline had something where you're just supposed to kind of, like, accept it. Accept that it's, like, sort of mystical or accept that it was the exact thing that you said it was in the beginning. And it's just, like, it didn't feel like it really went anywhere hmm. to me. I just really liked the whole idea of like her referring people to Sam for the first time and then Sam referring people to her and they're sort of back and forth. I thought it was yeah. cute. I thought no, that, was that fun. stuff's fine. But the like the actual substance of the story with like Captain Headaches being mm. going to take over his dad's photography business and the like absurd recreate the photo work. Yeah, we're like, it's talk fun about to recreate photos. Else. It's fun and fine. But like when you start doing like landscaping, yeah. it's too far. It's yeah. too much. <laughs> and then they were like insane. If I was the daughter, I'd be like, Mom, you're crazy. We're done. We're done with this. Yeah. It was, so was too gonna, much for me. I, I couldn't talk I, about that next. And it spilled into the Cassie storyline and it was zero percent interesting to me and I hated it. Ah. So yeah, so there's these visitors at Grey House. This uh, woman and her daughter, and the daughter basically wants to leave after one day, uh, but they get started on this project of recreating this photo that they took together when the, little, when the daughter was little. And uh, yeah, it becomes quite the uh, project. <laughs> and yeah, they're like, they are digging up rose plants and like painting, uh, um, painting benches and getting flowers and and all this stuff and the whole idea behind this plot is that like this project kind of forces them to spend time together because they get kind of involved in a project and so it makes it her not the 
daughter not leave and uh and they end up kind of bonding together uh that was sort of the idea is like it keeps delaying her yeah but it was too much for me because first of all they could have had a less crazy project like this was honestly a little bit like um the mom's a crazy person (laughs) and then also um it was a little too much for me at the end where the photographer guy and the daughter were like oh well we're we're gonna be in love now i'm like like, stop taking it so far yeah yeah Mm -hmm. We feel the same way about it. That's exactly, I was like, this is, you're trying to satisfy too many, like check too many boxes and you're not checking any of them like well enough. I just did not think that it was, yeah. Mm. Same, same Interesting. As yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, they do end up, the daughter and Andrew, I guess his name is the, the, um, the headache guy end up <laughs> going on a date together. So that was supposed to be cute um but anyway and uh, like here's the thing i'm supposed to be rooting for this girl who's in from out of town for one night who can barely spend time with her mother Mm -hmm. to start dating some guy in a small town first of all where's that going she doesn't even have time to talk to her mom so Mm -hmm. of course their relationship is going to be a long distance one that's going to work out i think not (laughs) i didn't need it i didn't need it get out of here with your silliness yeah Fair enough. Fair enough. I, th- I didn't bother me. I thought it was kind of cute. Uh, I know I- Saposaurus. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so uh, and photography is like a huge part of my family. My grandpa is a, um, was a professional photographer. He took um, uh, panoramics and, and, uh, and then my dad has done professional photography. My brother has. And so like, I'm so used to like, time spent on elaborate photography stuff so i don't know maybe that's part of it so then the next plot line of this episode is a steamer trunk gets delivered to the house and it is from elizabeth merriwick who is the ancestor of obviously of grace and cassie and all of them and they start to open it and they find a whole bunch of clothes and that happened to fit grace perfect (laughs) and yes and grace uh puts on the clothes and it starts inspiring her to write and uh and where she starts becoming inspired to write she writes and everybody loves her stories about elizabeth merriwick and uh yeah so uh what did you think at least about the setup this idea of her of this clothes and everything like that and the writing georgia oh gosh <laughs> you just you you um uh, i honestly i was more excited for it than i ended up being satisfied with it like i thought mm. it was going to be really cool and it just kind of was like grace stressing out about stuff that she doesn't need to stress out about which was really just unfortunate to me. I thought, okay, it's going to be cool. Like she's going to be writing and she's going to be all creative and do all this cool stuff. Are we talking about Courtney yet? Cause that really bugged we, me too. We, we are going to talk about Courtney. Okay. So, so yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah. the other thing, have we ever heard about Haverhill before on the show? No. Is this the first uh, time? Yeah. No. Yeah, it's the first time. Okay. Well, anyway, so there's this local college, I guess, in the town in Milton called Haverhill and uh, evidently it's like the greatest college ever and it and uh martha is an alumni of haverhill and uh, evidently it wasn't so great when she was going there but now it's like really stepped up its game and so there are some funny scenes of her like trying to frame her uh, that's why she goes into the store originally to get a frame for her diploma because there's this woman coming in from Haverhill to do these interviews and uh, of this of the upcoming students and and so, uh, so anyway, so you have these plot lines where Courtney tells uh, Grace that she's super excited because she has this interview to for Haverhill, and Grace says, "Oh, I would really like to go there as well." And uh, but she hadn't set up the interview; all the slots are gone. Well, uh, she she gives her story to her teacher. Her teacher gives it to Martha because she loves it so much. And Martha gives it to the people at Haverhill and they want to interview her. And <laughs> that I, so we will continue on with the story, but like, I realized I'm like, I don't, there's something about Courtney that's just not working for me. And I think part of it is that she feels even in her styling, 
feels old to me. And I looked up, the actress is 26. And I... So I think, and I think you can tell, like she's definitely way older than Bailey Madison. And I don't know, there's just something about it. They don't have chemistry and there's just, I don't know. They style her like she's like in corporate America to me. And uh, I don't know. There's just something about it that's not working. Courtney drives me bananas. (laughs) She did when she was dating Nick. She did when she was being friends with Grace. She's the worst. <laughs> you love Courtney, Georgia? I don't love Courtney. No, that's the thing. I liked Courtney. I really liked her in the beginning. I thought it was cool that she had the story and stuff, that she had, you know, had the brain tumor or whatever. And then, and then remember that? She was like, oh, sick. And then she's like, that was before, it was supposed to have happened before we actually met her. And then she realized, okay, I like to go like bungee jumping or something. I don't know what her activity was, but she was supposed to be like extreme and cool and and kind of different from Grace, and it's supposed to make Grace all brave and, and interesting and everything. And then it's just, they turn her into this, everything that happens is like, poor Courtney. Like, oh no, Nick's being mean to her, poor Courtney. Oh no, Courtney doesn't get into the school, poor Courtney. Like everything is just, everyone has to like help take care of Courtney. And I think it's the writing. I don't think they're doing her any favors. Yeah, She's like just the before. worst. Courtney's the worst. She wasn't. She didn't have to be. You know, it's only she came in and was the worst and has been the worst ever since. If she was okay. She had potential. And then they just like, wah, wah. We're going to like get rid of her. So they're just. I hope they get rid of her. She's the, I hate her. I hate her a lot. She's not likable to me. I don't, I don't even know. That. I don't feel like I ever liked her. I'm just going to come out and say it. I don't uh-huh. think I ever liked Courtney. I didn't love her. And I just I want her to have drama club friends that aren't Courtney. <laughs> That's the whole point of putting someone in drama club. So they hang out with the weird drama club kids. That's it. Yeah, she that, be that whole thing has kind of been abandoned in, in favor of writing, I feel like. Yeah. I haven't heard anything about her acting since she got that <sighs> Which thing. is fine, but come on, get rid of Courtney. She's the worst. <laughs> yeah. You can't just get rid of her now. Why? Why? Because now she's Car like, accidents don't only exist in, in Middleton? Oh my <laughs> god, you want to... Oh my god gosh wow obviously they can't get rid of people you want to kill off one of her friends like her only friend <laughs> and think of how dramatic it would be and when then Nick would have all this really guilt good. it would be so good no when that's not why we like good witch you when calls a heart people can have that we don't like that <laughs> we like our like easy going you know they started off the show with enough drama with the with yeah the dad and everything so it's fine this is no 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 none of that she can go away to college okay we don't need but that I, I feel like they're not doing her any favors at least like i just feel like she feels old and corporate and like judgy and needy and, and such a yeah. victim such a the most about. martyry person in the universe because she's mad because what happens is is that she's mad that grace ends up taking her spot in the interviews at least that's her theory we don't really know for sure that that's happened but that's what courtney yeah. surmises and then also what happens is that uh they get a journal from the same place that sent the steamer trunk and it's elizabeth merrick's journal and she reads through it and it's exactly the same story that she wrote and so grace is having all these conflicted thoughts and it's kind of a two-pronged thing here the first thing is she she feels like she stole the story but do you agree she shouldn't feel that way yeah. No, yeah, she should not feel that way. Ridiculous. She's I, the I, worst. Also, even if she like, even if she had the diary in front of her mm-hmm. and used it as the basis for her work, right? That yeah, still wouldn't right. be a problem. It's still creative writing. It, I did not understand. I was like, oh, I'm missing something here. The fact that she was this had this enormous amount of guilt about writing stories that were already something that happened. And I'm like, yeah. did, if you didn't know, why, like, why is this happening? I did not, I still don't know why. She I feel like that. even if she knew, I wouldn't yeah. care. Yeah. But Agreed. she would, like, you know, yeah. But, yeah. Though, I just, and like, I'm just not, this is also a problem I've been having this whole season, is like, Grace is suffering from like, Merowick guilt. And like, Cassie's like, yeah, you should feel guilty. And I am just not on board with that. I'm not on board with Grace feeling guilty about things. And I'm not on board with yeah. Cassie being like, you just need to be careful. Well, no trouble. Because that was the other, the other plot line about this was that she went to Abigail because she felt like Abigail was yes. going to tell her what she wanted to hear. And then she feels kind of badly about that, that she should have gone to her mother. 
and that was all kind of weird like I don't know. Like, I guess but like, I it's because Cassie's been the worst this season with her being like, yeah, maybe Grace is at fault because Courtney overheard her talking to Nick about them breaking up. Mm, maybe it is Grace's fault. Mm. So and I'm like, no, none of that is Grace's fault. No. And then if I were Grace, I would also be like, yeah, I don't want to tell Cassie things because she's trying to make me feel guilty for being a human being. <laughs> with magical <laughs> gifts. Yeah. So how does Cassie want that, that would be like that this. would be like Rachel. That would be like you feeling guilty because you're better at math than I am. And then your yeah. mom being like, Yeah, you should really try to not be as good at math. Because yeah. it makes your friend feel bad. Like, yeah. uh, but like, what is... That's what, ridiculous. It's what ridiculous. Is, Do not hide your candle under a bushel. <laughs> but what is Cassie expecting her to do in this situation? Like, I guess go to her and then like tell the people at Haverhill that she has magic or something? I don't understand what's the, what is the correct, proper thing here? That's and how is this, how yeah. is this any worse than being like, oh, I feel we're having a test. I'm going to study. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. the answer is it's not. And I'm just getting yeah. really, I'm getting really irritated with like the whole Cassie being like, Grace, don't use your magic. Because it's like a weird message to send on, on this show, on any Hallmark thing, but just like in general, it's a weird way to handle this kind of thing. And it's not like, oh, well, none of us really know how to deal with it. It's like, oh, Grace, yeah, you didn't know you should feel bad for this and this and this. And it's like, she shouldn't. She shouldn't feel bad for any of it. She didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just feel like it's going down a path of saying, like, yeah, um, try not to be special. Yeah. Keep it a secret. Yeah. And also, I don't want you to be special because it might make other people feel less special. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Like, come on, it's making boy. me really mad. I am absolutely against like participation trophies okay. i'm like we're competing and we're gonna win yeah duh and if you're like if you're tired of not winning practice get better <laughs> i don't know I, I don't know what cassie wants her to do mm -hmm. that would be right um i mean i guess maybe she just wants her to communicate with her period but i don't know it seemed like there was some kind of correct course of action that she expected her to take that she didn't take and uh, anyway that's what happens and so but like i hope that she keeps writing these stories because they were like good stories and that would be sad if she like is not writing not writing yeah. because she's like doesn't want to use her magic i don't know and that's i feel like what the solution was like yeah don't use your magic for your own personal gain because like, it's like isn't it's not using ma it's not just casting a spell yeah. She's just being a person with a gift. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I I agree with you on that one for sure. So is she she's not going to that school now because she still did have the interview. And I I don't know. I, don't know. I was a little bit confused because yeah. it seemed like they were really impressed with what she did and being so humble and everything. They'll probably end up going to there because it seems like it's the local college and that's just yeah. how TV works is that the people right. go to this <laughs> unforeseen, untold local com college that's actually super prestigious. Yeah. Like that but just suddenly exists once they get in their senior year of high school. That's yeah, just how television works. Yeah, that's, that's true. Life works, Amber. Well, and Grace is, yeah, unless they want to do some kind of like spin off, like different world or something like that uh, from Cosby's show. show. Oh, I love that show. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Anyway, it was a good show. Oh, uh, it. it went to Hellman. Yeah, it's yeah. still on. They show it in the mornings. Do they? Oh, yeah. good. There's a ton of it on YouTube too. Anyway. Okay. So, yeah. So, not only does Grace get Courtney to get an interview by what she does but grace gets her a letter of acceptance like that was pretty wow and she tells courtney that courtney is the best friend anyone could ever have and i said no that's false <laughs> it's just not right frankly i think nick's been a better friend to grace than courtney and that's and nick's a terrible friend <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. It is. It's really interesting. Cause yeah. Cause, um, Grace tells 
Cassie, what is wrong is I went to Abigail because I knew she would tell me what I wanted to hear. And Cassie says, but you got to the right place in the end. And she says, someday someone might write a story about you. Make sure your life is a good one. Yeah, I just don't get the lesson that Grace is supposed to learn, or maybe I do, and I don't agree with it. The whole thing with uh, the uh, Andrew and this girl going on a date was also kind of arranged, as all dates are in Middleton, was arranged by Cassie because she's eating this chicken soup, and she's like telling the guy, you should go to the bistro and eat this chicken soup. It's the best thing ever. So she goes there, he eats the chicken soup, and then he takes the girl on the date for the chicken soup. And <laughs> get a final little cute thing with uh, Sam and Cassie and Sam saying, one thing that really concerned me is that comment he made about me being your helper. And they go back and forth, like who's the boss and stuff. It was, I thought really cute. Uh, and also so, a really fun you know. sitcom from the eighties. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. So quality. Yeah. So there you go. That is the episode. So it was it was an interesting one. I guess I enjoyed it a lot more than you guys did. But Sorry, but yeah. That's all right. Got to be real on the podcast. It's true. Wow. Keeping it real, bro, all day. <laughs> Keeping it real all day. This episode is called Match Game, and it looks pretty cute. They had a little preview of it, uh, and there's a matchmaker in town who's up to some shenanigans. It sounds yes, like he's making Abigail. a dating app. Yeah, is going to be involved in all of that. So, and I hope my niece isn't here this time because when we were watching The Good Witch on Sunday, uh-huh. a, in, a commercial for Match dot com came on, oh. and then for the rest of the night, she was like, "We should just go see what's on Match dot com for you. Like, <laughs> maybe we should try out Match for you. Do you want to go to Match dot com?" And I was like, "No, I don't, little niece. <laughs> Mind your own business." I was trying to help you. You have your own matchmaker, Amber. Oh my God, it's a Hallmark movie waiting to happen. If she had, so like, cute. yeah, it's going to be one of those, like, she's so going to hack into my computer and make some match.com <gasps> yeah. account for me. It'll you, be like that. Bear in mind, she's it. seven, and that's it's going to be the worst. No, that's perfect, because then she'll pick the right one, and you'll get it mixed up and be like, oh, she picked this one. That's what I'm going to go with. And then I'll be like, wow, that's a weird match. That's not who it was supposed to be. And you go, uh-huh, because that's not who the little child picked originally. And then you'll meet the one that she no. picked and they'll all be, no. See, it's just written itself. I, yeah, I agree. Open. I agree. I'm just saying, I, she is not invited for the match game episode. She is Man. not invited. Please invite her. Please. <laughs> hold to hear how it goes. So, there we go. It's another episode. We have uh, five episodes left in the season. So we're at halfway point. So we will uh, see what happens, uh, what happens next. And check out this week. We had our Memorial Day special bonus podcast uh, where we reviewed five different uh, hallmark films that had to deal with people in the armed services and uh, and that was really a neat thing to get to do and we hope you enjoyed it and then we have uh, next week we have our interview with casey manderson which you will all really love he was so sweet so lovely who is he's going to be in the perfect bride too wedding bells so that should be fun. This weekend on Hallmark Channel, we have Mary Mr. Darcy, which should be really fun, and the first of the Haley Dean Mysteries. So lots going on this weekend on Hallmark Channel. And so let us know what you think. Let us know what you thought of this episode in the comments or on Twitter. We'd love to hear your thoughts. And uh, Georgia, where can people find you? On Twitter and Instagram, I am Georgia Speech. Georgia, like the state and the word speech, all one word. Great. Amber, what about you? As always, I'm at Amber Brainwaves on Twitter, and that's it. Great. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews on iTunes and on YouTube. So make sure you check that out. And make sure you're following us on at all things where you can listen to podcasts, YouTube, iTunes, SoundCloud, and Stitcher. And make sure that you're following us on social media because we try to post every single day and uh and we think you will really enjoy what we have to do so thanks again and we will talk to you all next week bye bye everybody